Pakistan is one of the most corrupt countries in the world and is often described as a failed state. Its government and military leaders struggle to control domestic insurgents like the Taliban. The country suffers from chronic sectarian and religiously motivated violence, including attacks against Christians. Pakistan has the third largest population of Muslims in the world, behind Indonesia and India. Approximately 95% of the country's over 185 million people are Muslims. Though the Constitution guarantees religious freedom, Christians increasingly suffer under the blasphemy laws. One law stipulates that any person who defiles the name of the Prophet Muhammad or the Quran may be punished by life in prison or death. In 2010, Asya Bibi, a Christian mother of five, became the first woman in the country's history to be sentenced to death for blasphemy. In November of 2014, this young Christian couple and parents of four small children were beaten and then burned to death by a mob of 600 angry Muslims at a brick kiln just north of Lahore, incited by Islamic clerics who falsely accused the couple of committing blasphemy against Islam by burning pages of the Quran. Over 40 people were arrested. Christians are also treated as second-class citizens forcing them to take the worst and lowest paying jobs and are often prevented from advancing in their careers. Christian girls are frequently kidnapped and forced to convert to Islam and in many cases are abused by their Muslim employers. With less than 2% of Pakistan's population, Christians are an oppressed minority with almost no voice in society. However, that isn't stopping these Bible school students from preparing to go to some of the most dangerous places in the country to bring the good news of Jesus Christ. This Bible college graduate, who will call Parvez and hide his identity for security reasons, really didn't want to lead a church. I didn't want to be a pastor here in Pakistan. Pastors don't get any respect. They're insulted all the time. I didn't want that. But the Lord showed my mother a vision that I would be a pastor, and she told me I should go into ministry, and I decided I should be a minister of Jesus Christ. Soon after graduating from Bible school in the year 2000 and being prepared for what would be a difficult ministry, Parvez, then in his early 20s, planted a church in his hometown in the northern part of the country. His expanding network of churches now has more than 300 families. Parvez and his team are also helping to educate the people who are being forced to work in the brick kilns as slaves. As a result of his Christian activities, Parvez has faced much opposition and violence, including a July 2012 attack that could have cost him his life. One time, I had baptized three people, including the preacher in the mosque. After that, I was kidnapped by Muslims and they tortured me very badly. I was shot in the upper part of my right leg. Parvez was released and taken to the hospital. But not long after that, the husband and father of five was kidnapped again by the same group. They beat me again. This time they broke my right arm with a stick. They told me to deny Christianity and accept Islam and announce it loudly. They said, if you do not deny Christianity, we will beat you more and teach you a lesson and kill you. I refused to deny Jesus Christ. So then they forced me to drink urine by putting a stick in my mouth. You may be surprised by Parvez's reaction to this horrible episode. I was happy during the persecution. I was praying and had my eyes toward the Lord. I was excited to be tortured for my Jesus Christ. That was a crown of life for me. Not only is Parvez's wife worried about her husband's safety, but so are his children, who also face opposition because they are the only Christians in their school. They are wondering what is happening to Papa, and maybe these attacks will happen in the future. And what will we do if it happens again? Also, Christians from other churches in his area are also concerned about the well-being of Pastor Parvez and his family. They said, we can arrange for you to be sent abroad, but my wife and I said to them that we refuse to leave. The Lord called me to serve in this area. Why should I go to another country and spend a happy life? 
I'm happy to serve the Lord in my native town where I am called to be by Jesus Christ. One of the main reasons Parvez and his wife won't leave Pakistan in spite of all the risks is because of their concern for the Christians who are forced to work in the brick kilns as slaves. Many Christians in our area are persecuted. Most of them are brick kiln slaves. They borrow money from the brick kiln owners. When they can't pay the loan back, they're told to come to the mosque and become a Muslim. Otherwise, you will be killed. Parvez told me the tragic story of a Christian teenage girl who was killed because her father asked the owner of the brick kiln they work for for a loan so he could take his ill daughter to receive emergency medical attention in May of 2014. Instead, the owner had his guards beat both the father and sick girl, accusing them of lying and avoiding work. During the attack, the father fell on his daughter to try to protect her from the beating, but he couldn't. And as a result of the sickness and attack, the girl died. The local Christian community demonstrated against this brutal act of violence. The followers of Christ in Pakistan are marginalized, and as a result of these kinds of crimes, which are frequent, they go unpunished, and the abuse continues. And due to the pressure, some Christians do convert to Islam. But Pastor Parvez says he's not giving up on them and still meets with them secretly. There was a family I met who became Muslims. I prayed with them. I counseled them. Now, they want to come back to be Christians. But if they do, the Muslims will kill them on the spot. Pastor Parvez was one of nine pastors who were sponsored by VOM Canada to take in the week-long Theology of Persecution and Discipleship course at this Bible college in Pakistan. Personally, it is very good for me and all the pastors and Christian leaders. They should learn the persecution teaching because ultimately they will have to go through persecution while living here in Pakistan. We should always be ready to be persecuted. Zubeda is a young woman with a passion to bring the salvation message of Jesus Christ to whoever will listen, especially among the over a dozen Muslim tribes that she is working at with her husband Jacob in the northern part of Pakistan. Zubeda says her family were nominal Christians, but when she read and studied the Bible that she needed to accept Jesus as her Savior, her life dramatically changed, and she began to share the message of God's love wherever she went. With the desire to be more effective, she attended an evangelical Bible college, graduating in 2009. Since then, she's been active in spreading the gospel in practical ways. We are running a swing center over there to reach the co uh, ladies and uh, f females. And we started uh, the uh, computer classes to reach the uh, children. Through the, these tools, we are reaching them. While many in these Muslim communities appreciate the practical and spiritual help they are receiving from Zabeda and Jacob, not everyone appreciates their efforts, especially the more militant Muslims. When we reached at a check post, they broke our cameras and they said to us, you are not allowed to go over there. And we are not allowing Christians to go over there. And because they are, they are feeling fear about Christianity and about Christ. For the Christians living in these areas dominated by a Muslim population, they are constantly facing problems, including physical violence and discrimination. Our community, they are uh, Christians, they are living about uh, 20 uh, families and they are not giving good jobs and they are not, uh, not giving uh, admissions to our, our children uh, in best schools. While the threats and harassment are frequent, including from leaders in the mosque, that isn't stopping Zabeda and Jacob from doing what she says God has called them to do. And that's bringing people to Jesus Christ and discipling them. And she says that is happening. Many are coming to know the Lord. We, we don't care about uh, problems. We gave our lives uh, to Jesus Christ and we want to serve over there and uh, uh, it is a part of our calling. I feel, feel that there will be persecution, but uh, we, uh, we believe that the Holy Spirit is with us and the uh, Holy Spirit is encouraging us to face these things. 
Zubeda and Jacob also took part in the Theology of Persecution and Discipleship course put on by VOM Canada and says the teaching was very important to them. Our area is already under persecution and when we go out to do outreach and evangelism we face verbal and physical abuse sometimes. This teaching will be very effective for us in our home area. Akhtar has paid a huge price to pastor in northern Pakistan. Akhtar is a former Muslim who came to Jesus over 20 years ago after trying to prove to a Christian friend that the Bible was full of errors and convert that friend to Islam. When I read the Gospels, I couldn't find one single mistake against Jesus Christ, and I read he was the only person who never sinned in his life. Over the next eight years, Akhtar, who had a university degree and a good job, studied different religions, including Christianity. And in 1998 says he became convinced that Jesus Christ was in fact the Savior and accepted him as his Lord. For five years I was a secret believer, a secret Christian. One day when Akhtar was not home, his wife found his diary and read that he'd become a Christian and went and told her family. So they threatened me, they abused me, they called me infidel, they put my dishes separately because I became a Christian and they hated me. Before I came to Christ, I was married. My in-laws told me to deny Christianity and come back to being a Muslim. Then our daughter can stay with you, otherwise you will have to divorce her. As a result, the marriage was over, which was a very painful time for Akhtar. And adding to that, even his own family were against him. Many times they tortured me. They beat me with their hands, sticks and other things. In spite of being rejected by his wife, her family and his own family, Akhtar refused to deny Jesus Christ. I started to visit a pastor and he taught me from the Word of God how to be strong during the difficult times and how Jesus would help me in these difficult times and how he takes care of me. Akhtar would need to be reminded many times over the years of the cost of following Christ, not only for himself, but for others as well. In 2006, he graduated from Bible school, and soon after started house churches in the northern part of the country, and began to quietly share the gospel and to be available to seekers. One of the people Akhtar would encounter was a married Muslim policeman with two children. The man approached Akhtar to be prayed for after he became sick. He had heard that Jesus healed. I prayed for him and he was healed. We had strong fellowship and Bible study for a year and he accepted Jesus and was baptized. His family members noticed the change in his life. He looked different. They found out he became a Christian. His brothers hired some people for what would be about $2,000 to kill him. They shot him three times in the chest and killed him in August of 2013. He's with the Lord in heaven. It's a law in Islam that if a Muslim will change their religion, they will be killed. Recently, someone I knew in another town told me to deny Christianity and come back to Islam. If you don't do that, whenever I see you in your town, I will kill you. The Muslim converts have the most severe persecution. In March of 2014, Akhtar, now remarried, almost lost his life. Why? Because he left Islam to follow Jesus and his Christian activities. After dropping off one of my children at school in the morning, I was on my way home. The road was very clear, and a vehicle with people who were opposed to me in the gospel came up from behind me on my motorcycle and hit me very badly. They wanted to kill me. The police were close by and came quickly and saved me. My motorcycle was totally damaged. I got hit on my back. There was severe pain in my back and still I can feel that pain. But that has not deterred Akhtar. In fact, it has made him more determined in spreading the gospel. But he does admit his ministry does affect his wife, who he married in 2007. My wife is a believer, and she knows the word of God and what I face when I preach in unreached areas. But as a mother and wife, she becomes worried when I'm away from home preaching the gospel. She spends most of the time in prayer, and when I come home, she gives thanks to the Lord. For Christian leaders like Akhtar, Parvez, Zabeta, Jacob, and many others just like them, and for those preparing for the ministry, the challenges are great, and the opposition at times is intense. 
but they're all committed to seeing the gospel of Jesus Christ bring new life to the people of Pakistan and are willing to pay the price to let their light shine into the darkness.